This is Rostra, the St. Theodore Guerin Junior Classical League podcast, where we bring the lessons of classical study into the light for the benefit of all. Welcome back to another episode of Rostra. We've got Margaret Martin with us today, and what a great topic. It's a linguistic topic, which always gets me excited. Uh, So first of all, Margaret, tell us, what is your topic and why did you pick it? So my topic is Latin's influence on other languages. Um, When looking for a language in high school, I'd never taken a language, and one of the things I looked at was what skills and what things I'd get from taking the class other than just the credit. And with Latin, I knew that Latin is one of the roots of English, and learning Latin would help you understand English better, but also I know that Latin influences other languages, which is why I wanted to know a little bit more about how that came to be. Yeah, and you know, you and I talked by email as we were were setting this up, um, because we had a couple of topics that I had set out there. One was Latin's influence on English, one was Latin's influence on other languages, Um, and you, I think, very wisely suggested, well, why don't we just combine those and kind of talk about both of those in in one episode there. So... Mm -hmm. Let's start off with something that may be a little more familiar, uh, certainly to the English listeners, uh, English-speaking listeners. Um, what are some of the influence of this ancient Italian language on modern English? Yeah, um, so I know that a lot of phrases, like we talk about this in class sometimes, like the phrase willy-nilly comes from two Latin words, volo and nolo, which means to want or not to want. And I think that, like, phrases like that are really cool, like, how just etymology in terms of, like, how words change over time, but also how from a language that started from, like, 700 B.C. is still used in, like, 2022, 2023. I I would agree with that. I think you've got the cool factor, Uh, exactly as you said. You know, you're talking the founding, traditional founding of Rome, 753 B.C., so you're talking uh, close to 3,000 years later, you've got that influence. And then seeing it turn up in interesting turns of a phrase, like you mentioned, Willy Nilly, and um, there's so many others. You couldn't read something like the, the, uh, the U.S. Declaration of Independence or the Constitution. If you took out all of the words that were derived from Latin, you'd have a useless document. It, you just wouldn't understand it. So there's so many words... Um, in terms of seeing, understanding meanings maybe a little bit more deeply, uh, and so forth. Um, anything else, and I want to stay English for a moment before we, we move on to, to any other languages, but uh, besides Latin being the roots of some words, anything else that you found in terms of influence of Latin on English? Um, like idioms, like Latin has its own idioms. Yeah. Um, I found that they aren't They are very different from Latin ones and English ones, but some are kind of similar. Um, I know that, like, one was you build a camp or pitch a camp. Right, right. And, like, we, like, set up camp. Like, stuff like that. Very similar, but also different meanings completely. And I think that's also something worthwhile. You talk about, obviously, you need to pick a language to fulfill a language credit, but there's more to it than that. And that's one of the things that idioms really do. There are some similar idioms in, in those little those phrases, the way a particular language says something. Um, uh, there's, there's some things that are in Latin that are just like in English, but then there's some things that are different, and it's neat to contrast those. Um, I know one of the favorite ones we talk about in first year uh, is in, in English, we make a plan, which is a very, really artistic metaphor, if you think about it. We're making or creating something. Latin takes a plan. Very different kind of image there, and so it's neat to see that. Like I say, though, a lot of people think about the influence of Latin on English. But you also want to bring that in because you see influences of Latin on other languages as well. Mm-hmm. For example. Um, so th- the main language that I found that were like mostly built on Latin were French, Spanish, Italian, Portuguese, and Romanian, which I think those... Like, for the most part, they make sense because France, Spain, Italy, and Portugal, those are all where Rome was. And so it makes complete sense why those are the most influenced by English. But Romanian, 
I, I'm not the best up to date on my geography, but I'm pretty sure that that's a little further, a little bit more in where Ger the Germania area was and the Roman Empire, but... Still, though, you're right in that those, the cultures that gave birth to those languages are geographically within Rome's reach, and certainly as Rome was ever expanding, uh, both through the military and through trade and just general uh, migration of people, uh, Latin gets spread out, and it starts to mix and mingle with other languages, and things change a little bit, and so you get that influence uh, on some of those other languages. Now, I don't remember, we talked, uh, I think, at the beginning um, of first-year Latin last year. I usually ask people if they studied other languages. Have you studied anything other than Latin? So, um, I did not study it, but I knew um, American Sign Language from previous just knowledge. Gotcha. Um, and then I also grew up um, with Korean-speaking families like around me, so okay. I'm able to understand Korean. Okay, gotcha, well. gotcha. So you've got you got American Sign Language, uh, which is a completely different system, obviously, mm -hmm. uh, and then you've got an Eastern language uh, with with Korean. So many students I've had over the years. I've talked about these similarities, especially with French and Spanish, because mm -hmm. uh, those are really common in, in American high schools. And I've even had students who did one of those languages while doing Latin mm -hmm. and found really the Latin helped them with vocabulary, helped them with grammar. And I would certainly say if you, know, if you choose to uh, pick up another language somewhere along the way, whether it's in college or something else, you're gonna find it easier because of your study of Latin. Again, both the vocabulary, the grammar, structure, uh, and, and all that sort of thing, so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so if you had to give a plug, if you will, give an advertisement for why someone in the 21st century should study this language that began nearly 3,000 years ago, what would be your best reason? What would, why, why someone should study that today? Um, I mean, it, I think it's kind of just like a boring answer, but like, it's kind of just, it helps with thinking, I guess. Like, it, I think of Latin as being more of like a universal thing, because it's like, it's used in science, it's used in mathematics, and so like, if I don't know what like, something in chemistry means, I can look at like, the root of it, and sometimes those roots like, come from Latin words. Like, sure aqueous solutions that means like water solutions absolutely and like things in law like those come from latin words i don't know any law terms but like a lot of things just come from latin and if you want to like better understand things or not be like lost i guess in the language that you do speak maybe picking up latin could help absolutely yeah yeah certainly i think you're right to touch on the areas of science uh law especially those uh, I'm going to go ahead and mention the church. Uh, I, I remember, of course, we're recording this right now um, during Advent and leading up to Christmas, so we're thinking about Christmas carols and all this kind of stuff. Uh, and we've got the one Christmas carol that talks about peace on earth, goodwill to men. Mm -hmm. And I remember being in high school, and uh, it was a public high school where, where I went, uh, but we were uh, looking at the, the Latin passages behind some of those songs, and I realized, wait a minute, that isn't actually what, what the Bible says. It's, when the angels come, they say peace on earth to people of goodwill. Well, that's a totally different meaning from, from that song lyric. And so going into the original text, again, you can see, uh, you can see some of those kinds of things. So mm -hmm. uh, anything else that you want to share with us about uh, Latin's influence, whether it's on English or, or anything else? Um, I think that in general, just if like cultural stuff, like, a lot of things go hand in hand, but everything is very different. So like, English is not French, English is not Spanish, English is not any other language than English. It may be similar in like its roots, same thing with like French, Spanish, Italian, they may be similar in roots, but they are also still very different things, which is why I can't just say that, oh, I know Latin, so I must be able to understand French. I may know Latin, but I may not know. French, so maybe go out and learn more than just Latin. Oh, I love it. Go out and learn more and, and let the Latin help you uh, as you uh, increase your, your language. Well, fantastic, Margaret. We're glad to have you uh, on the show. I think it's going to be a great episode. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Rostra. You may check out all our episodes on Spotify. 
and follow us on social media at Garen JCL. That's at G U E R I N J C L. <laughs>